play a game. Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for joining me, whether you're listening live, locally, in the Little Rock, Central Arkansas area on 96.5 FM, The Answer, or if you're listening by the live stream at 96.5 FM, The Answer, dot com, or if you're listening by podcast or on Krypton Radio, those two versions would be delayed, a pre-recorded version, if you will. Uh, They go out after the live show. So this show is both a live talk radio show and a podcast. And then we also rebroadcast on Krypton Radio because I I love all those formats. So I'm I'm trying to hit them all. And podcasts are great, but there's something about live radio that just has an energy to it and a spontaneity to it, if you will, that I love. You don't don't get to stop and edit. You just got to keep going for better or for worse. So... uh, so I love both, and I, and I started in radio before I also got into doing a little bit of podcasting. But enough of all that. Welcome to the new year. It is 2018, 2K18, 2018. So looking forward to another great year on Shane Plays Geek Talk. You know, Zach, as of the end of May, the, we'll, we'll have three years of Shane Plays Geek Talk. Really? Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. This wow. is This is an established show. This, wow. is, this is no longer an experiment. This yeah. is an established show, and I've had a lot of fun along the way. You've had some fun. Appreciate everything you do for us as the engineer, running things in there, pressing all the buttons. Hmm. Uh, so uh, anyway, let me let me get through the housekeeping notes, and then we'll we'll banter a bit so that Sal's grandmother and her dog Muffin don't, don't jump on me. So uh, anyway, this is Live Talk Radio, first and foremost. You can call in at 501 501- Eight two three zero nine six five, or you can tweet me at Shane Plays. That's S H A N E P L A Y S. Again, the the call in number if if you'd like to call in. And I've got a cool guest today. Uh, so if you want to ask him any questions or make any comments, and I'll introduce him here in a moment. Is five zero one eight two three zero nine six five. If you're listening by podcast or on Krypton Radio, the show notes and the links for today's show will be up at shameplays.com on the blog. Um, and then last week's show is out there on the blog and also on podcast form, and it's replaying this weekend on Krypton Radio. And we had a panel discussion with comedian Michael Brown and certified card-carrying geek Richard McBain, who are both friends of the show, about The Last Jedi. It's a good, good discussion, I thought, uh, Zach, because all three of us had different perspectives. So I thought that was good to kind of dig in. And I'll just say again, I loved it. I, I thought it I thought it was fantastic, and it, and it did cool things and it made this trilogy its own but go listen to that if you didn't hear it it was a really good discussion um you know because because michael and richard had different takes on it um anyway and and it is it is divisive to the to the star wars community i've seen it three times now i'll probably see it one more time in the theater that's usually what i do with the main uh star wars movies try to catch them at least four times in a theater okay uh this show as i've said is a podcast after the live radio show it'll go out a couple days after live show on the blog at shameplays.com, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, and more. And we're starting to get more and more people listening by YouTube, which I love. That's why I put it on YouTube. So you can also check it out. I have a YouTube channel at Go Shame Plays. So you can check that out. Uh, and then last but never least, Shame Plays is carried on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci fi for your Wi Fi. KryptonRadio.com. That's a 24 7 geek internet radio station. Gene Turnbow does an excellent. Uh, Excellent job with that station over there and everybody that works with him. A couple of uh, quick announcements here, then I'll announce my guest. Uh, one, uh, you know, the show does have a Patreon. Uh, I, I usually don't push it while I'm talking. I just let the uh, the uh, the commercials or the ads mention it. But yeah, you can go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays and you can, you can pledge as little as a dollar an episode. Uh, my hope is to get more and more Patreon support to be less reliant on ads because the podcast version, people complain about the ads. Well, I don't know what to tell you, people. It's, you know, this is different. Talk radio has expenses. So to put this out, uh, you know, on radio and then roll it over into podcasts, I, it's not just me sitting in my, in my office or bedroom at home with, with a computer and a mic. It's, there's a whole studio thing going on here. That being said, you do not have to support by Patreon. Uh, I do have sponsors and I'm, I'm really blessed to have them. So I try to have a mix. Uh, I'd like to have some community support, but then also the traditional sponsor model because, 
that's a win-win. It helps me, but it also helps local sponsors. It helps uh, Collector's Edition Comic Book Store. It helps Game Goblins Game Store. It helps Troll Lord Games. It helps Arkansas RPG Con. It's a win-win. I don't, I don't want to just, you know, run them an ad. Uh, I, I'm trying to build relationships that help everybody and to help the geek community. But anyway, enough of all that. Um, also on, uh, and I do have room for one more sponsor relationship. If anybody, I'd love to go into the new year with another sponsor relationship where I'm helping my sponsors and they're helping this show. Okay. Also speaking of sponsors, uh, collector's edition, the comic book store, Michael Tierney, who has been a sponsor since the very beginning. Thank you, Michael has, it's the last day of their annual after Christmas sell. Get on over there today. It's it, that's today, January 6th. So if you're listening by podcast or uh, crypto radio, unfortunately you're out of luck, but if you're listening live, I also mentioned this last week. So I hope you already know about this, but you can get on over to either the comic book store in treasure Hill road in little rock or collector's edition on JFK and JFK in North little rock in the park Hill area, 25% off all action figures, 25% off all back issue comics, 25% off all graphic novels. Uh, 50 cent comics are half price. So that's every 50 cent comic. And he's got a ton. It's got long box after long box after long box full of back issues. So the 50 cent comics are now 25 cents each. And today only uh, go to collector's edition on Facebook or whatever. They'll probably have them in the store for you. To be honest, there's uh, this coupon day. If you have one of the coupons, uh, you can get 50% off any one item. Go in any item that's on the shelf. Uh, you can grab it and and get it 50% off. So that's that's a cool deal. Okay, got the housekeeping notes out of the way. I want to introduce my guest who just happens to be uh, R.J. Carter, who's the current co-author on the Destroyer series of books. Now, these series of books have a special place in my heart. They're almost right up there with comic books uh, for how, how, how much I devoured these books, uh, in, in like, uh, high school and all that. And, and, and I was excited to say, I was like, oh, they're still going and wow, I'm talking to the co-author. And so if you don't know who the destroyer is, we're talking about Remo Williams, Remo Williams and his mentor Chion in, uh, they had, they practiced the mysterious, powerful martial art of Sananju. Now don't confuse this with the Remo Williams movie that was made with Fred Ward in the eighties. Okay, just take that and throw it away. Okay, that was that was a, a bad attempt to adapt Remo Williams because it's the books are so much cooler than that. But anyway, R.J. Carter, do I have you on the line, sir? You have me on the line, Shane. Good to speak with you, and I'm smiling from ear to ear listening to you talk about Michael Tierney's stores. I yeah. told you I used to live out in that area. And yeah, Michael was my go-to guy for comics. I've shopped with Michael literally since the '80s. He had a. a the first comic book store I ever heard of was his. And I was like, what? And somebody explained there's a whole store full of nothing in comic books. So I begged my mom to take me in it. It was like walking in. It was like, Aah! and you know, it was, it was like <laughs> the angels are singing. So, but yeah, Michael's a great guy. He, um, really enjoy supporting him. Now you said this show does originate in Little Rock, Arkansas. Now you told me when we were talking earlier that, that I guess you lived in the Conway area for a few years. I, I did. I lived in Conway when I got my first book published. Uh, that wasn't a Destroyer book. That was an Alice in Wonderland pastiche. And I was uh, doing some signings at local bookstores and uh, Hastings when you still had those. Yeah. So uh, so it's kind of a homecoming for me. Well, excellent. So, uh, yeah, let me let me throw out your, your bio here real quick, which is slightly altered from your bio on your Amazon author page. Uh, R.J. Carter is the product of early exposure to American comic books. He is the author of Alice's Journey Beyond the Moon. That's the pastiche he just mentioned. Nicholas's Cage and A Night Before Christmas. And night is spelled with a K-N. So it's night like a, like a shining night before Christmas. You're also the co-author of Time Hunter, The Sideways Door. And now you're working, if I understand correctly, with Warren Murphy on the, uh, the new Destroyer books. I, I wish that were absolutely accurate. Is it? Okay, clarify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so, yeah, Warren truthify Murphy, us. You know, Warren Murphy unfortunately passed away about two years ago. Well, that was one of the uh, things I was confused with, about. So, yeah, kind of help clarify that. Well, he's kind of like Frank W. Dixon, you know. I mean, they're they're right and hardy boys a hundred years after. He okay, died. He all right. Get the byline on it, you know. Okay, I was. That's one of the things that I was trying to clarify. 
because uh, I was like, well, I thought he was gone, but now, so I thought maybe, you know, there was some incorrect information on the internet or something like that. So are you the sole author on these books now? I, I am the sole author right now for as long as they'll have me. Excellent. Okay. Well, I will update that because my notes are showing that you are co-authoring. So uh, I guess for uh, to uh, he's so Warren Murphy is sort of the author emeritus, you know, where he just stays, you know, his name stays attached, but you're actually uh, writing them. And if people don't know, back in the early 70s, the first Destroyer book was published by Warren Murphy. And was it Richard Saper? Sapir? Richard Sapir. Richard yes. Sapir. Okay. And they co-wrote a lot of them. And then at different times, it was just Warren Murphy, and then it was Warren Murphy and Richard Saper again, and then there's been some co-authors and ghostwriters and stuff like that, but now it is lovingly entrusted to the hands of R.J. Carter. So people just say, uh, Remo Williams is so cool. Like I said, dump dump the movie. Now, R.J. may love the movie, and there's people out there who may love the movie, but what I'm saying is, is don't assume that the books are the movie. I don't, I don't think the the movie was definitely was necessarily a great representation of the fun that the books represented. You know, other people if, may if you really don't like, if you really don't like the movie, seek out the first episode and the only episode of the television show and you will love the movie. Okay. Well, the only thing I remember about the television show was he ran up like a fire hose stream or something like that. And I've never seen it yeah. since. So I, I, I guess it was like a pilot that only aired once or something like that. Here's what we're going to do. RJ, we're going to talk about Remo Williams and his mentor. I always say Chun, but how do how do you pronounce it? I, I pretty much like that. It's Chun. Chun, okay. Who is who is his mentor in Sananju, which is the martial art of martial arts. Uh, Remo Williams is also the avatar of of a destroyer god. Uh, there's so much cool stuff going on in here. The, the destroyer books are like they're kind of like all those like Mac Bolin or this or that, but they added a bunch of really over the top and kind of supernatural and comic booky elements to it. And I love them. So we will, we are going to get into that. Uh, but first I went, I haven't had a news segment in a while and just from talking with you online, I thought you might be, have a, be a fun guy to have along for the news segment. So we're just going to do a quick couple of news items and then we'll get into uh, Remo Williams and talk about what you're doing with the destroyer books. First, I've got a banter with Zach. I don't know if you've ever listened to the show or not, RJ, but if I don't banter with Zach, then Sal, who's the head of our news team, his grandmother and her dog Muffin get mad at me. Okay, so I oh, got to banter with Zach. So, Zach, my lovely wife, the lovely Sheila, sent you some cookies. So, enjoy those cookies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, she baked like all these cookies. Yeah. So, one, she wanted you to have some cookies. Well, I thank you for that. But two, she's trying to get them out because I, she didn't want me to eat them. <laughs> right. So, so she's killing two birds with one stone there, but I hope you enjoy those cookies. They're very good. I will. Uh, second, I finally got caught up on Supergirl. Okay. Rain beat Kara down like a tin drum. Yes. Now I knew it was coming mm -hmm. because I saw your tweet when you were, <sighs> when you were, when you were committing crimes as the spoiler. But like I said, I follow your tweet. So it's, it's on me. It's on, I know, <sighs> but she got beat down yes she did she got like a tin drum like a baby seal now how are you yeah go yeah ahead. now people are saying that she was conflicted with her feelings for monel no i think but, she got beat down yeah i agree yeah. with you i think full powered she'll lose to rain yeah rain is i don't rj i don't know if you're keeping up with supergirl or not but uh we like zach and i we watch like Supergirl, Flash, mm -hmm. legends of tomorrow all right. that stuff agents of shield is oh, yeah. pretty good so yes, far this year this whole futuristic Cree thing is pretty mm -hmm. crazy. But yeah, they Supergirl got beat got beat like a tin drum. Yes. And I'm reading uh I guess this is a spoiler, I don't know, but it's out on I'm seeing it just in the news. Okay. That she's going to be in a coma when it, the, it comes back and yeah. the Legion of Superheroes is going to have to That's right. suit up and take care of business while she's in a coma. So I'm, get, I'm getting goosebumps it's right cool. now. I'm getting goosebumps. Yes. Now, go off. Fans of Brainiac 5 will not be happy because there's a picture out there of uh, of what Brainiac 5 looks like. And he look he don't look good. He doesn't look like really? Brainiac 5. Yeah. So uh, not to me anyway. So he looks like some blue dead corpse thing. I don't know. But, <laughs> but people can, you know, make up their own minds. All right. So we bantered. So hopefully I won't get an nasty gram from Sal's grandmother and her dog Muffin. Did you feel we bantered enough? Yeah, that was okay. Enough. We that's bantered. Cool. All right, all right. Love you, Zach. Thanks for everything you do. All right, uh, go ahead and speaking of Sal, turn on the microphone in the super secret newsroom, 
And uh, let's see what's going on in the news. Woohoo! All right. Working on a Saturday. They work hard. Folks, remember for every dollar of Patreon support that the show gets, the news team gets a penny an hour raise. So it's a it's a win win. And they've had a few weeks off. They've had a few weeks off for the holidays, but now they're back. Okay. So uh RJ, feel free to jump in or comment on these any of these. I'll try to blast through them as quick as possible so we can leave plenty of room for the destroyer, which I All love. Right. Mr. Remo. I don't want to get Chun or Chun unhappy. Right now he's watching a centrifuge. So he's happy for right now, but you know, eventually that's going to, and people read the books, they'll know what I'm talking about. He was all fascinated with the centrifuge anyway. Okay. Uh, so the star Wars, the last Jedi has officially crossed $1 billion worldwide at the box office. That's according to comicbook.com. Of course, there's other, uh, you know, news services reporting it. Uh, you know, I, I'm just want to point this out one that some people I, I have tried to, I kind of paint the last Jedi as, is somewhat of a failure and it is nowhere near a failure. It's, it's going strong. Um, it's, it's 35% behind force awakens at foreign markets, but it's 36% ahead of rogue one. So, uh, you know, and, and it doesn't surprise me that the last Jedi is behind force awakens because force awakens had so much pent up demand on it. You had, over 10 years of anticipation for a new start, you know, so it, it doesn't surprise me. Now, I, I do acknowledge that there's some divide among the Star Wars fans on this movie, uh, but it's by no means, by any stretch of the imagination, not doing well. It's going to end up being the highest grossing movie of the year. So, um, you know, it's it's doing, doing really well. Uh, RJ, have you seen The Last Jedi? I have not seen the Last Jedi. I've seen the Force Awakens, and uh, yep. is that old enough that we we're out of we're out of spoiler territory on that one? On oh, Force Awakens, yeah. On a major movie like that, on a Star Wars movie, I'm, I lift spoilers after two weeks because that's a major pop culture thing. So, uh, okay, yeah, I, I did watch the the Force Awakens. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, the masked Sith Lord kills the old guy, and they blow up the great big mechanical thing. Right. On the yeah. Planet. Yeah. Is that episode four or episode yeah. nine? Yeah, there's a lot of people that point. I, I enjoy The Force Awakens, but there's no doubt that that in some ways it was a retelling of A New Hope for, you know, this generation. So, uh, but I, 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 I recommend you check out The Last Jedi because it goes off on its own direction. And it, it's got some pretty... I'm going to check it out when I get a chance. Uh, yeah. The funny thing is I was picking up Justice League characters for my son last night at Walmart, yep. and a young boy said... I almost walked down the pink aisle because they had a Star Wars sign down it. I'm like, well, that's where you're going to find the Star Wars stuff for a while, son. Yeah, for a while. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, they're definitely, uh, I mean, Ray is a, you know, very strong character and, and that sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's The Last Jedi has some risky storytelling. So I think that you might like it. But anyway, you know, everyone has to uh, season to their own taste. Uh, okay, r- moving right along, because like I said, I want to leave plenty of time to talk about uh, the Amazing Destroyer books and your involvement there. The Nintendo Switch, this is according to Polygon, but I've seen other news services report it, has, has become the fastest selling console in U.S. history, according to Nintendo. So this is, um, yeah, it's even beat the Wii, which was the uh, previous um, record holder. Uh, it launched in March 2017 and in 10 months has sold in more than 4.8 million units in the United States. Uh, that's the highest total for the first 10 months of any home video game system in U S history. Um, and then that's, that's from Nintendo's own, uh, press release. So switch is doing well, you know, they, um, Nintendo was able to benefit from innovating for the Wii. The Wii U did not do so well, but they're back they're back in the ball game with the switch and they continue to reap the benefits of innovating. Of course, if people don't know the switch is the console system that you can play as a home console, but you can also unplug it and take it with you as a uh, portable console. So there's that. Uh, do, do you or your son have a switch by any chance, RJ? No, we, we, we avoid the switch right now. We've managed to stay away from the, that kind of video game console. He, he's more into the plug and play and the uh, handheld, um, 1980s revival stuff okay like uh, the pac-man yeah nothing, all over that nothing wrong with that that's pure core gameplay right there 
So nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, yeah. And, and in fact, you know, it's interesting I, on, on my Wii, I, I bought Super Mario Brothers off of the, the Nintendo store or whatever years ago. And, right. and, 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 you know, my son and his cousins will play that like, like crazy. So it's cause it's just, it's, it, it hits a pure, uh, just a gameplay thing, you know, and it's, it's a very pure game experience. And then finally, um, we've got, uh, Netflix's bright, which is the movie on Netflix that has Will Smith and he's paired up with like a orc partner or something like that. It's basically like a buddy cop where the regular world of like LA or something is mixed in with fantasy of like orcs and elves and magic and that sort of thing. And in the first three days, it drew 11 million U.S. viewers. That's that's doing really well. A sequel is already uh, commissioned for this. The, uh, will Smith will be returning um, and then David Ayer, who was from Suicide Squad, I think is going to write and direct it. Now, the thing with this is the critics, of course, are saying it's the worst thing that's ever been made ever, but like everybody loves it, right? And it's it's just on Netflix, so everybody's watching it. Uh, Zach, have you seen it by any chance? I haven't, but I will. Well, yeah, it's getting good word of mouth for you. Know, people are like, it's a fun movie or whatever. So now what I have heard from people at work, so I don't know if I'll watch it. I don't even have Netflix right now, but if I ever get it again... Uh, they said it's got a lot of language in it, okay. like a lot of language. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I may give it a miss, but uh, but evidently a lot of people are really enjoying it and more power to them if they do. Yeah. So uh, do, do you have Netflix, RJ? Have you seen this? Have you seen this piece of masterpiece cinema yet? I, I have access to the shows. I have not seen a whole lot of Bright uh, from what I've seen. Yep. It, it reminds me a lot of, um, it's like Alien Nation, yeah. uh, The Mortal Instruments. Yeah, see, I, when they first described it, I was like, oh, this is Alien Nation, which I loved Alien Nation, both the movie and the TV series in the 80s. But then I realized, oh, no, this is fantasy stuff. So it's like orcs and elves. So it's kind of, without the cyberpunk, it's kind of Shadowrun because you've got the, yeah. you know, the fantasy elements mixing in. Okay, that's our news items. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get us to a break. So when we come back, we can talk with R.J. Carter, who is the current author and hopefully will be the continuing author indefinitely on the destroyer series one of my favorite series of books in which now i am happily rediscovering after uh meeting rj and, and learning that this this amazing series is still going on remo williams chun sananju chinos and the destroyer god shiva when we come back on shane plays geek talk <laughs> comic book lovers visit the wildstars.com today from the mind of author and comic book industry expert michael tierney it's not just a comic book it's a comic book novel the wild stars is sci-fi and so much more learn the explanations behind ufos and space gods this isn't the twilight zone this is the region of the milky way galaxy known as the wild stars we guarantee you've never read anything like it the complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trollord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today 
Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. And we're back on Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into things we love. I'm talking with R.J. Carter, who is an author in his own right, but is also... uh, the author on the current author on the destroyer series, which it's hard to explain how on the mark the destroyer series is for hitting my, my, my geekiness, especially as I was a developing geek uh, in like junior high and high school. Uh, you know, and if, if, to be honest, my parents have been known. I read these books. They'd have probably be like, what, you know, but uh, at the time I didn't even think anything of it. I was like, Oh, this stuff is great. So set us up RJ, I, you know, I could introduce w- Remo Williams to the world, but I think since you are the current torchbearer of the awesomeness that is Remo Williams and Chun and Sananju and all that cool and Cure, the secret organization, if no, if somebody has never heard of the Destroyer series of books, what's it about? Oh, boy. Well, I, I think the best way I've ever heard Remo summed up in one sentence is, is that Remo Williams is the 11th commandment, which is <laughs> thou shalt not get away with it. Uh, <laughs> Remo Williams was a, a beat cop in Newark, New Jersey, and next thing he knew, he was being framed for a crime he didn't commit, the murder of a drug dealer, and was rushed to the electric chair to be executed. The execution was faked, and when he woke up, he found he was being recruited into an agency called Cure, where he was told he was going to be their enforcement arm. He was going to, uh, under the authority of the president, operate outside of the Constitution to protect the Constitution. And if you didn't want the job, well, we've already got a headstone with your name on it. We can just put you under it now. Right. Which, yeah, what do you choose? (laughs) Uh, I think I'll take that. Yeah. Well, fortunately, they picked Remo because he was very patriotic and he he didn't have anybody in the way of family, so he wasn't going to be missed. He became a man who didn't exist. And the head of Cure, and the other half of Cure, Cure's a very small agency, uh, and, and if you're wondering what cure stands for, it doesn't stand for anything. It's all capital letters, and it means what it says. It's cure, the cure. Uh, Remo Wonder went some intense training with Master Chun, who is the reigning master of Sinanju. Now, when Warren Murphy came up with this idea, Warren, Warren and Dick came up with this, no one was really paying attention to martial arts. It was this very mysterious kind of thing. You didn't have a Taekwondo dojo on every corner strip mall. Uh, so it was very, yeah, let me, let me just step in there. They first wrote this book in the first one they wrote in the early sixties, but it didn't get published till 71 and the martial arts craze didn't hit till the late seventies or or early eighties. Yeah. I mean, Remo Williams predates, uh, Iron Fist for as far as the, um, you know, the Occidental learning the Eastern arts, uh, Sinanju itself is the sun source of all the martial arts. Uh, and to kind of put that in perspective, if Sinanju were the uh, the Smithsonian Museum and you walked in with a post-it note and you could write down everything you could fit on the post-it note, that would be every other martial art you've heard of. So, you know, right. the, the ninjas, they stole the page from Sinanju, which, which makes it easy for me because not being a, a very large aficionado of martial arts, if I don't know a certain move, I can make it up because it's wide open. Right. And that was one of the questions I was going to have for you. So let me, let me go ahead and just go into that now. And and then after that, we'll, we'll keep talking about what the destroyer books are and why they're so cool. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I want to ask you about Sinanju, but let me point out a couple of things that you mentioned. Um, uh, one was, you know, uh, the destroyer books are unapologetically patriotic. They're, you know, they're, they're the, the United States and its constitution are something amazing and worth being protected. So, you know, they're unapologetically, um, you know, uh, patriotic and rah-rah and even jingoistic and that sort of thing. Uh, And then the other thing is, like, I was reading uh, your book. Um, You know, I've I've only been able to just start it, but it was was a bully pulpit. Which one is it? Uh, Let me go into my Kindle here. Uh, yeah, bully pulpit's the one that's out right now. Okay, and that's and, the one uh, where at the very Continental Divide should be out this week. And that's the one, oh good. So it is okay. Continental Divide. Well, that's why we originally scheduled this date because we were hoping that book would be out or or soon to be coming out. So Continental Divide will be coming out soon. That'll be your second destroyer book. 
But at the beginning of Bully Pulpit, basically Remo shows up to one of those riots that's going on uh, yeah. because people don't like a, a a jury decision in a police officer case. And Remo just, you know, doesn't sugarcoat his opinion on that when he's interacting with one of the rioters. And then it, and it turns out that that, that guy wasn't even he's part of the neighborhood and it but had been bust in to froth things up. So, you know, if anybody's paying any attention at all to the news right now, they, you know, you can understand what you're talking about. So, uh, sure. and yeah, it's a lot fresher then. Yeah. Well, it's, it still resonates pretty fresh. Uh, and then the other thing, going back to Sananju, Sananju is a martial art. Like I said, it's an invented martial art for the destroyer books. Chun is, there's only two masters in the world right now. One is Chun and the other one is Remo. And, at the, and for several books, Remo is, even though he can do all these amazing things, Chun's like, you're not a master. You're not even, you're nowhere even oh, near to be. Elbows being. bent. Yeah, what's wrong? Yeah, Remo could take out like 50 dudes in three seconds and Chun would be like, that was pathetic. So, uh, but Sananju is, it's it's really kind of a, uh, it was, it's almost kind of like the infinite improbability drive from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe. Whatever you need it to be at that moment, writing wise it really can be you know without what it is yeah without destroying the narrative of the books without being too much of a deus ex machina uh but i was going to ask you uh and when i say it can be whatever you need it to be i mean it, it really crosses over into almost like the supernatural i mean he could do crazy stuff so uh how much latitude do you have that was one of the questions i have when you're writing sananju like is are are the editors and the, and the and the keepers of the books are they cool with you just inventing new Sananju stuff? I think so, but the the only thing I've been told is that Sananju is very elegant, so it, it's it's not chop sake. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just don't get in there and start throwing punches and come out bloody. Uh, you you try to come up with something that that's very elegant and graceful and deadly. Because let's face it, the only reason that anyone learns Sananju is to go into the business, and the business is assassination. Yeah, that that's another thing. This, you know, Sinan, the Sananju is not a I want to improve myself martial art or I want to perfect my body. It's it's about killing. Yeah. And and they've worked for kings and emperors through throughout thousands of years. In fact, the only reason that Chun even agreed to teach uh Rima Williams Sananju, because Rima Williams was a white man, and by golly, no white man was going to learn right. you know, the ancient Korean tradition, uh, is because he, he has to treat Smith as an emperor. Right. He, he can't buy into this whole, what, you you elect your leaders? How stupid is that? Right. Uh, so therefore, he just <laughs> always refers to Smith as Emperor Smith or, or Mad Herald whenever he's not around. Yeah, so think of Smith, who's the head of Cure, and one of the only two people in Cure, I guess. Uh of of who was who was the guy that was Magnum PI's boss? Uh Robin No, the Oh the yeah, kind I of know who you're talking about. Yeah, take him but make him infinitely boring. And he just sits in this office all day and 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 yet uh Chun sees him as, as an emperor. So because that's the only way he can, you know, with his cognitive dissonance or whatever, can make this work in his head. So but anyway, Sananju is crazy. Um, okay, so we, uh, I, I kind of side railed you. You were telling us what was cool about the Destroyer books. You, you were talking about Remo was learning Sananju, and then I side railed you on Sananju. So what, what other kind of crazy cool stuff goes on in these Destroyer books? Oh, my gosh. Well, if, if you've read the early stuff, which is really, really classic, yeah, you, you find a lot of political satire, uh, a lot of humor is thrown into this. And, uh, you know, it, it's a very sexual series a lot as well because you know remo's got those 27 steps to take a woman to ecstasy right so you know you get to, you get to play some, kind of the james bond uh role with that sometimes right yeah there's but, that that's an ongoing gag uh that that 27 steps thing i mean i remember that comes up a lot um and then and a lot of the a lot of the enemies they fight are almost like comic book villains or like James Bond worldwide conspiracy kind of villains. They uh, are, you know, they started yeah. out more as a, uh, you know, a, a union uh, bust was going on or, or the, the Chinese were going to be doing something. And as, as Warren and Dick realized that, Hey, we've got an ongoing gig here. This is actually right. taking off. They had to ramp up their game. So suddenly you started getting artificial intelligences 
Right. Uh, you started dealing with androids who were programmed for survival, like Mr. Gordon's, uh, whom I absolutely love. Uh, and then they came out with, um, there was Nuik, which is the guy who is supposed to be the master of Sinanju, but he ran off and started doing his own thing with it. So, you know, in fact, Nuik was Chun's name. And Nuik was so, he was so ashamed by what his nephew had run off and done that he reversed his name. So it became Chun. Ah, I said, I didn't, I don't, I didn't read that one. So L- little bit of trivia there. Yeah. Well, there's so, 150 when your book comes out this week, or I think you said 152. this week, 152. Now I was reading through and I'll put this link on uh, the show notes, but you know, there's, there's a fan site out there. One of those enthusiastic fan sites where they, they go through a summary of all the books and I guess they listed that a few of them here and there are considered non-canon by Warren Murphy, but the vast majority of these books are are considered just part of the regular canon. It just keeps going and going and going, and they just keep having they fun are. with it. Yeah. So you know that that presents its own own problems that uh, you know, I've, and I've talked with the publisher, and we we deal with that because if if you take everything as canon and you recognize who the presidents are in each one and yeah. all the events. Well, Remo's 72 years old now, right? and it just doesn't fly right. So so we've got this sort of shifting timeline where, yes, everything happened that you've read. Uh, Remo's always done this for about 10 years. Yeah, and that's what the comic books do a lot. Now, when they don't reboot their universe, DC or Marvel, what they'll do is sort of timey-wimey shift. This has all been going on for the past five or 10 years. So main exactly. difference is, is that originally President Kennedy started this but in reality, now Bush started it or whatever, you know, Bush, something yeah, I don't like think that. Actually, yeah. come out with it. Yes, yeah. they've always just they stuck with Kennedy, but they stopped using his name. I don't, right. I don't even think they really ever did use his name. They just always said that shortly after uh, the president pulled Smith in to head up this agency, right. he was assassinated. Right. And and he picked Smith because Smith was just his integrity was unbreakable, and he had no ambition for taking things over, and he had no imagination. They. They gave him a psychological test. They gave him a Rorschach test. Right. Everything looked like an ink blot. <laughs> so he's the perfect guy. For, he's the perfect guy for the job. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And and in your book, uh, Bully Pulpit, you know, uh, it, it the first Smith scene is he's just sitting in his office and he's looking at he's got this very powerful computer program that shows him trends he should be concerned about, and he's just sifting through that to determine what you know what do I need to send Remo. Uh, kind of thing. So, uh, you know, but I know that there's some books where you get like maybe he gets in danger, you know, where they'll tell a little bit more of his story or something like that. So, uh, but for the most part, he's just kind of the boring guy, you know, in the background sending people on missions. Um, yeah, he's ex CIA, so he's yeah. in action. Yeah. Um, so, and I'll tell you, here's one of the things that I loved about the Remo Williams books. And this is this is the stuff other than Sinanju that really differentiates it between you had like what Mac Bolin, where were some of the other crazy, you know, action guy? Oh, there's yeah. there's the butcher, there's yeah. uh, Able Team. Yeah. I saw one yesterday. I was I was researching these books again and, and there's one series called The Penetrator. Yeah. Yes. And it said in the style <laughs> of the destroyer and Mac Bolin, the penetrator. So uh it, you know, the eighties and I always mess this word up. Zeitgeist, Zeitgeist, uh, Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. Did did it's just the action guy over the top series of novels was very much a part of the eighties Zeitgeist. Uh, where I guess even in the seventies, with you know, with the Remo Williams book starting in the seventies, um, you know, I loved the introduction of the of the comic book level stuff, the uh, the the supernatural stuff, and then it. One of the things that absolutely fascinated me, I, I, I just this was a, a thing that I really zeroed in on with Remo Williams, is he's also the avatar of the destroyer god Shiva. Uh, he is now, and 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 that is a, it, it's a, it's a fictionalized version of a, of a Hindu god, right? Shiva, I believe, is is a uh, a Hindu god Shiva of destru- the destroyer. Yeah, the destroyer, but he is the avatar, and then there is another avatar out there of was it Kali? That is sort of in opposition to Shiva. So some, not all of the books, but some of the books would touch on that. And those, I would just go nuts when they did that, you know, cause sometimes we'll go nuts in a few books from now then, because we're going to touch on that. I love that. Yeah. That's one of the things I was going to ask is that continuing this sort of Shiva Kali, you know, dynamic avatars of the, of these Hindu gods. 
Um, that does continue. And then, you know, the thing about it was that, that that's the other reason why Chun agreed to teach this to uh, a white man was because he recognized elements of the prophecy that there would be, you know, an ultimate master of Sananju come along that would tie it into the, uh, the destroyer Shiva. And he recognized that in Remo. And of course, we eventually see that in the series. But it became very much a uh, deus ex machina, where if the villain was too strong and Remo was killed, well, every Here time he's killed, yeah. his eyes go black, he stands up, the, the sky royals black, he says, right. I am created Shiva the Destroyer, and, you know, it's over. Which the 13-year-old in me loves <laughs> so much. I can't, I remember we were doing, and I was in eighth grade in, in my computer class, I was learning how to animate uh, like computer graphics, one pixel at a time. And I did this yep. very blocky version of Remo Williams and this energy was swirling around him and it said, I am created Shiva, the destroyer. And I'm just like, ah, so I don't know why I just, I just love that stuff. It, it's very much, you know, like, Oh crud. Well, how do we get Remo out of this one? But I, I love it. it. It just works for me. So, um, well, let me ask you this. I, I explained one of my favorite aspects. I mean, I love, I love, you know, the the synthesis or whatever of Remo Williams is much stronger than its individual parts. So I, lo- I love pretty much all of it. But what what is your favorite aspect of these books? Because I'm assuming you were a fan before you became the author. Well, you know, I am a fan, but I'm probably not as long time of a fan as you might think. Okay, uh, I had I really only recently discovered Remo Williams. Um, I I do book reviews for for a website. And a friend of mine was saying, you, you can go hey, ahead and you can go ahead and plug that website if you want. Well, yeah, I, I write reviews for criticalblast.com. dot com. Thank okay. you very much. Yep. Uh, and a friend of mine came to me and said, "Are you going to be reviewing the new Destroyer book?" Now, this was when they were coming from Tor, the Tor Four, that mm-hmm. they called. And I was like, "Well, why should I? What is it?" And he went. He he tried to do the whole info dump on me. Uh, I got the books. I really liked the books. Um, I liked them so much, in fact, that. When the time came, they put out a call for anthologies uh, for short stories from the fans. I'm like, oh, this is an opportunity to write a, mm-hmm. a Rima Williams story because mm-hmm. God knows it was a it was a genre, a franchise genre. I wasn't going to just break into that by saying, hey, can I write one? Right. So when they put out the uh, the big thick fan anthology, uh, More Blood. Right. Uh, I sent them my story, which is a Remo Williams Batman mashup uh with all the trademark stuff taken out i mean you know, i love it but you know it's batman well i have to say and, i love batman and always go with batman that's what i always say but remo would drop batman like a bad habit i'm just saying i'm just saying you better read that story <laughs> yeah i'm just saying i love batman i love him but remo would drop him okay anyway go ahead it, it was <laughs> important to keep things evenly matched in my yeah. mind on that one okay but um okay remo be, uh, as written time. in the books would drop batman we'll leave it at that Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. No yeah. problem. All right. But uh, Devin Murphy is the publisher, and that's Warren's son. And he got in touch with me and said, hey, you know, we like the story. We're going to publish it. I'm, I was like, oh, cool. You know, I'll, I'll get a copy, right? Because that's, you know, usual right. payment for an anthology. Right. He's like, yeah, how would you like to take over the series? And then you, and then after and, you woke up from passing out? Yeah, I had to reattach yeah. my mandible after I found it on the yeah. floor. <laughs> it, was, um, it was awesome. But the thing I love about Remo is his his relationship with Chun and how much of a smart ass they both are. Yeah. Um, did he just hit the dump button? Cause <laughs> no, that one's okay. That'll fly. Okay. That one's okay. Yeah. But, but you know, they just, they play off of each other. Um, they've got this love hate relationship thing going on there and it's more love. I mean, yeah. You know, oh, it's total love. They it, love each other. Remo yeah. is Remo sees him as his adopted father. Cause he didn't have one. And, and Chun definitely sees him as his son and he'll tell everybody, you know, when he's, when Remo's not around, have you seen my son? Where's my son? But when they're together, it's, you know, you're, you're a pale piece of pig. Yeah. They just, they tear each other down. And that's, you know, really good guy friends are usually that way. I mean, honestly, you know, we'll rip, we'll rip on each other. Um, you know, but, but you know, we love each other or whatever. So, um, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to take us to a break. When we come back, uh, I want, I've got some more pressing questions, including, is Chun still addicted to soap operas? I want to know. Uh-huh. Uh, when we come back, let me throw some love at a sponsor. We'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk more with RJ Carter, the author of the, the continuing Destroyer series with Remo Williams, The Destroyer. I am created Shiva, The Destroyer. Okay, I'm getting too excited here. Here we go. Some goblins 
are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located at 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. That's no joke. Uh, I think they have a Warhammer and a uh, Magic the Gathering event just this weekend. They're constantly doing stuff. Okay, for all your gaming needs, I highly recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their co customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First-time customers, mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 more. Tell them Shane Plays, the Destroyer, sent ya. Hey, we're back on Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. Uh, and one of the things that I love is the Destroyer books. And I am absolutely pumped to be talking to the author of, of, of the current books, R.J. Carter, who just explained uh, right before the break how he really got kind of almost stumbled into it. Uh, he, wrote a, he wrote a story for a Remo Williams Destroyer anthology, and they reached out to him and offered him the, the, the job, which is, I mean, uh, I'm glad it happened. I've done a little bit of writing myself, and that, that kind of thing doesn't happen every day. That's like an author's dream. So, uh, you know, congratulations, RJ. And, you know, from what I've been reading – uh, you're doing a fantastic job. There, there's a tone and a tempo and a pace and a style to the Destroyer that, you know, reading Bully Pulpit, you're hitting the ground right off the bat with it. You know, well, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. So, and, you know, I, I know that's hard to balance your own style, you know, versus an established style, but it, it feels right. You know, I don't feel like, well, who who is this guy? So I come up with the plots as, as far as what I want to do with them and where I want to have them go. And then when I start writing, I'll, you know, I, I love James Mullaney's stuff. He was the master of the smart ass Remo. Um, right. You know, I'll read his stuff any day of the week, but when I'm actually writing my own thing, I'll go back to somewhere in the first 20 books of the destroyer and I'll stick to that uh, and read that just so that I get that particular cadence going in my head and make it a lot easier to flow out that way. Right. Well, it's, I mean, it, it feels right to me. So, um, you know, because so I, you know, I'm looking forward to to reading more and, and remind everybody again, Bully Pulpit is already out. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Continental Divide is coming out this week. Is that correct? Continental Divide should be out within a week from the uh, last thing I've heard. It's just, uh, you know, it's it being printed and put to paper. So, that's, so what is, uh, what is laying it right now? What's the the uh, the elevator summary of what's going to happen in Continental Divide? Oh, boy. Continental Divide was born of. When I when I was living in Little Rock and I saw a major accident where thirty and forty intersect. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know where they go under each other? Oh and yeah. It backed up traffic for miles, and I thought, gosh, you know, it wouldn't take nothing to find a couple of these places and just have an accident at them if you were a terrorist, and you could really cripple the country. Right. Oh yeah. So, oh, yeah. so that's the it was it's been gestating from that point. I can't get into exactly how and why we're going to do this, but we're basically going to unzip the country, which is uh, where Continental Divide comes in, and it will just play havoc with uh, interstate commerce, which is, of course, something in the Constitution and something which Remo can defend. Right. Cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, go it ahead. It also yep. happened during the election. Uh, so it's a little bit dated there, and we have, you know, um, uh, Kendall T. Rump on one side running <laughs> for office. Yeah, all right. Uh, we used to have Randall T. Rump, yeah, but they killed him. They didn't think he was actually going to run for president, apparently. And, then, and the, on the other side, we've got uh, you know the former Secretary of State and her assistant, yeah, but yeah. Dabadun. Yeah, hey, yeah. Well, boy, yeah. Where did you ever get the inspiration for that? So, yeah, as you said, these <laughs> can amazing. be. I pull it out of the air. Yeah, these books can be political satire. So, yeah, and a bit of trivia. If people don't know, uh, where thirty and forty meet in Little Rock, North Little Rock, uh, that's the busiest interchange. There's no other interchange like that in the country where two major interstates meet. 
And that also leads to a lot of drug busts uh, in North Little Rock and Little Rock area that may normally might not happen uh, because of that. There's just so much traffic coming through. But anyway, I got a couple of quick questions. We've got four minutes left here, RJ. Uh, radio goes quick. So uh, anyway, uh, Chun, is Chun still addicted, uh, addicted to soap operas? Chun is still addicted to soap operas. Uh, fortunately, the invention of the DVD complete collection has been able to give him something he can spend his time on a little bit um, at his own leisure. I love it. So yeah, there was it was uh, he, that was a recurring thing. Now at one time they would he's like I can't I can't come battle the supervillain right now because whatever soap opera is on. But I guess he can time shift now. So. Uh, or he would complain that he was missing a soap opera or something like that. Well, if you so. interrupted his soap opera, Rima would come come find uh, hotel concierges dead on the floor. Yeah, because <laughs> inter- yeah, don't interrupt Chun's uh, soap operas. Uh, so it sounds like one of the questions I had, you know, are you doing a set number of books? Or is it open ended? Sounds like it's open ended. So hopefully, you know, that'll just keep going and going and going. Uh, like I said, I, I feel like I'm rediscovering the Destroyer. So excited! I want to tell people if you want to sample. The Destroyer for Yourself. Amazon has the very first Destroyer book for free on Kindle. And then the, the uh, you know, the, ver- the the paperbacks or the Kindle versions are not ridiculously expensive. So it's a fun series to keep up with. Uh, but definitely check out Bully Pulpit and Continental Divide with R.J. Carter. Uh, you know, R.J., one of the reasons I like to do this show and do social media and everything is to meet cool people. Uh, that are doing cool things. And I definitely include you in that. I'm like, wow, I get, I can't believe I'm talking to the guy that's writing the destroyer. I can't believe books. I'm cool. Yeah. Well, you are, you know, you know, I won't have, you don't have to tell anybody if you don't want to run your rep, but okay. I can, yeah, your shame plays. You have the official shame plays stamp of your cool. So um, anyway, how do you have, you talk about your plotting books and uh, so we'll have to make this super quick. How many possible books do you have plotted out in your head? I've got, I've got the next seven plotted out. Wow, that is exciting. Uh, you think, what, roughly once or twice a year? That's my hope. Uh, you know, we had a long delay between 151 and 152, and I think we've got the Kings ironed out where that's not going to happen anymore. Excellent. Okay, i got to draw us to a close. People, this is R.J. Carter, the author on the Destroyer series of books. Go check out Bully Pulpit. Check out Continental Divide when it comes out. If you want to sample Remo Williams, Kendall has the very first book for free, uh, but make sure to, you know, buy the other books and support it if you like it. Uh, and then I've got to end with a bad joke of the week. I always do this, RJ. So are you ready? This is in honor of New Year's. You ready for the bad joke of the week? I'm ready for the bad joke. Uh, okay. I raised my left leg before the ball dropped so I could start the new year off on the right foot. Oh. There, that's the appropriate response. And we'll have a parting thought, which is nice. May all your troubles last as long as your New Year's resolutions. RJ, it's been a pleasure. Let's stay in touch. Same here, man. Thank you. Yeah, have a great day. You move like a pregnant yak. Sit. A Korean fingerboard. Begin to tap in your fingers, slowly at first, and then increasing the force. With time, your nails will become hard, your fingers strong, they will be able to do more than just carry food to your face. They will become a trained weapon. Train to kill. Not kill. A truck, kill. Meat of cow, kill. American assassins, kill. Like butchers. Masters of Shinanju, since the dawn of time, have killed to promote harmony and to bring about a more peaceful humor to the entire community. We have done this throughout history. For example, Genghis Khan, uh, the Persian boy, Alexander, um, Robin Hood. Robin Hood. A bandit, Louis the Thirteenth, Napoleon. Oh, come on, Napoleon died in his bed. Wrong. All of them, perfect assassinations. You make it sound like a public service. Professional assassination, it's the highest form of public service.
Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane 